Reverend Father, give the blessing. Blessed the kingdom of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For peace from on high and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy church, for all who enter of faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our Holy Father, Francis, Pope of Rome, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God-loving Bishop Milan, for the Venerable Presbyterate, the Diaconate in Christ, and all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our government and for all in the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For this city, for every city, community, and for the faithful living in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by sea and land, for the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. That we may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Come, memory, a most holy, most poor, most blessed, glorious lady to Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints. Let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. O Lord of God, mighty beyond description, glorious above understanding, merciful without limits, loving us all beyond expression, look with compassion on us and his holy church of master and show us and those who pray with us riches your tender mercy. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is your glory, honor, worship, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Shout joyfully to the Lord on the earth, sing praise to his name, give to him glorious praise through the prayer. Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Through the prayers of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Be gracious to us, O God, and bless us. Let your face shine upon us and have mercy. Oh, son.
bless the land. Wisdom be attentive. Come, let us worship and bow before Christ. O Son of God, risen from the dead, save us who sing to you. Alleluia. Angelic powers appeared at your tomb, and the gods became. Spirit, now and ever, and forever. Let us be attentive. Peace be to all.
wisdom a reading from the book of hebrews brethren scripture says lord of all you establish the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands they will perish but you remain all of them will grow old like a garment you will hold them up like a cloak like a garment they will be changed but you are the same and your years will have no end to which of the angels has god ever said sit at my right hand till i make your enemies your footstool Are they not all ministering spirits sent to serve those who are to inherit salvation? In view of this, we must attend all the more to what we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels stood unchanged, and all transgression and disobedience received its due punishment how shall we escape if we ignore salvation as great as ours announced first by the lord it was confirmed to us by those who had heard him peace be to your reader Let us be attentive. The one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. abides in the shadow of the god of heaven hallelujah he says to the lord you are my protector my refuge and my god in whom i trust hallelujah 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 reverend father bless the proclaimer of the gospel according to the holy apostle and evangelist mark May God through the prayers of the holy glorious lost apostle and joyous mark grant that you proclaim the word of his great power for the fulfillment of the gospel is beloved son of Lord Jesus Christ Amen Peace be to all A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, Jesus came back to Capernaum after a lapse of several days, and word got around that he was at home. At that, the people began to gather in great numbers. There was no longer any room for them even around the door. While Jesus was delivering God's word to them, some people arrived bringing a paralyzed man to him. The four who carried him were unable to bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they began to open up the roof of the spot where Jesus was. When they made a hole, they let down the mat on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, "My son, your sins are forgiven." Now some of the scribes were sitting there asking themselves, 
Why does the man talk in that way? He commits blasphemy. Who can forgive sins except God alone? Jesus was immediately aware of their reasoning, though they kept it to themselves. And He said to them, Why do you harbor these thoughts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven. Or to say, Stand up, pick up your mat, and walk again. That you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I command you, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. The man stood up and picked up his mat and went outside in the sight of everyone. They were awestruck, all giving praise to God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Glory to Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. In our Gospel today, we encounter a man who is afflicted with two infirmities. One physical and one spiritual. One that can be seen and that's obvious. And one that is unseen. And when Jesus sees the faith of these men who have brought the paralytic to Him, He says to the paralyzed man, My son, your sins are forgiven. Jesus focuses on the unseen infirmity first. That was his priority. Now in our Gospel today, I can't help but see an analogy to our life today in 2021. We are surrounded by a viral pandemic. And we are surrounded by a spiritual pandemic. Now with regard to COVID-19, you can turn on the news or go to social media and you see all these warnings about flattening the curve, social distancing, washing hands, etc. What do we hear about the spiritual pandemic? And yet a soul separated from God has a 100% mortality rate. And I would believe that we should all be focused on the health of our souls first and foremost. And I wonder many times if we are. Now to be clear, this spiritual pandemic didn't suddenly emerge. It's been evolving at an exponential rate for a long time. And we see its symptoms. We see a loss of respect for the dignity of human life. We see various corners saying that the Gospel message is outdated and it needs to be modernized. We see people trying to justify or normalize immoral behaviors or lifestyles. And more often than not, we see people relying on human initiative instead of crying out to God for help. It seems like as a secular society, We are so progressive, we no longer need God. And yet, are people happier? We see more pessimism, despondency, listlessness, despair, isolation, loneliness, depression, and burnout. Churches are emptying, and clinics prescribing antidepressants are full. People are weary, confused, and darkened by sin. The devil is having a field day. Now prophetically, 38 years ago, Alexander Solzhenitsyn in a speech said, Men have forgotten God. That is why this has happened. Now of course he was talking about the the communist spread in Russia at the time. But I can't help but think of those words with our own society today. Men have forgotten God. 
Your sins are forgiven. Jesus came to call us back to the Father, to heal us spiritually. And so as we come here in 2021, in the midst of a full-blown spiritual pandemic, entering into the second week of the Great Fast, I think it's appropriate for us to think about our relationship with God. What is the health of our soul like? Do we strive to enter into the narrow gate? Or do we more often than not find ourselves swept away by the crowd on the wide road to destruction? I think it's important for all of us to honestly assess how much we've been infected by the spirit of the age. We can't escape it. Now on this Sunday of the Great Fast, we also remember St. Gregory Palamas. And in one of his homilies, he writes, quoting the prophet Amos, Behold, there will be a famine, not for bread or thirst for water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. And St. Gregory goes on to say, a famine is being deprived of and desiring the necessary food. But there is something even more wretched than this famine. It is being deprived of the necessary means for salvation. And for someone to be misfortunate enough not to even realize it. Not desiring to be saved. He captures the essence of the spiritual pandemic perfectly. And the more we fall in love with the world or we give in to the passions and the further we go away from God, the less we realize how much we need salvation. Now, a few weeks ago, Father Deacon Miron in his homily mentioned how sometimes we find ourselves in the pig pen. The fermenting fecal material giving off warmth. We've kind of become nose blind to the stench. We feel comfortable and we've become immune to our wretchedness. And St. Gregory Palamas talks about the filthiness of the pigs are the passions, and those who wallow in the mire are the pigs. And that prodigal son who was in charge, he was the most indulgent in the passions of all. But St. Gregory points out, as we heard in in that parable, he was not able to fill his belly with the husks. He was longing. In other words, he could not find the satisfaction he desired in the pig pen. And that is a message for us today. We will never find happiness in the pig pen, no matter how comfortable we have become. That's because we are all filled with infinite longing, and only God can fill infinite longing. Your sins are forgiven. Let us pray that we know our need for salvation and for spiritual healing. And as St. Gregory says, let us take a lesson from the young man, the prodigal son in the pig pen. He He said the words of repentance when he was in the pig pen, but they were of no benefit to him until he left the pig pen, until he left the land of passions. And so it is with us today. We need to get out of the pig pen. We need to get back on the spiritual journey. And for some, this might mean some radical change. We might need to change our friends or the people we associate with. We may need to change entertainment that we pursue. We may need to change the way we spend our spare time. We need to go back to the Father and escape the love of the world. We need to repent and find healing in sacramental confession. To be restored to our dignity in the Holy Eucharist. And to be strengthened not to go back to the ways of sin again. We need to go to the vaccines that have been given to us for this pandemic. Starting with prayer and fasting and the ascetical practices to simplify our lives, to kind of put away the love of the world. We need to go back to sacred scripture and reflect on the teachings of Jesus 
and the writings of the Holy Fathers who teach us how to live according to the commandments of Jesus. This is the vaccine for the spiritual pandemic. This is the social distancing and hand washing associated with drawing back to God. Let us remember in this gospel today, Jesus prioritized the spiritual infirmity over the physical. And let us desire to hear those words, your sins are forgiven. St. Paisius the Athenite wrote, the world is on fire. And all the fire departments in the world can't put out the blaze. We need God and we need prayer. Let us hold on to those words. We need God and we need prayer. Let us desire to hear those words, your sins are forgiven. But remember, we have to show faith like those young men in the Gospel today that Jesus can see. And how do we do that? We start with the very first lessons in the Gospel of Jesus. His very first teachings. Repent and believe in the Gospel. Glory to Jesus Christ. Let us all say with our whole song, with our whole mind, let us say. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, Almighty God, our fathers, we pray you here and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you here and have mercy. Again, we pray for our Holy Father, Francis Pope of Rome, and for our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God-loving Bishop Milan, for those who serve and have served in this Holy Church, for our spiritual fathers, and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Again, we pray for the people here present who await your great and abundant mercy, for those who show us mercy, and for all Christians of the true faith. For you are merciful, loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever.
May the Lord God remember in His kingdom all you Christians of the true faith, always, now, and ever, and forever. May the Lord God remember His kingdom, our Holy Father, Francis Poporom, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God-loving Bishop Milan, the entire priestly diacon and monastic order, our government and all in the service of our country, and the memorable founders and benefactors of this holy church. May the Lord God remember all you Christians of the true faith, always, now and ever, and forever. May the Holy Spirit come upon you, the power of the Most High overshadow you. Remember, remember, Father. For the precious gifts placed before us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Grant His true mercy, only begotten Son, with whom we are blessed together with your all holy, good, and life creating Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. Let us love one another with sort of with one mind we may profess. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, one in essence, and a divine. The doors, the doors, with wisdom, let us be attentive.
Let us stand aright, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive to offer the holy anaphora in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Oh, let us lift up our hearts. Oh, let us give thanks to the Lord. Shouting, crying aloud, and saying the triumphal hymn. But he left us these memorials of his saving passion, which we have prepared according to his command. For when he was about to go forth to his voluntary, ever memorable and life creating death, and the night when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and all pure hands, and presenting to you God and Father, he gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broke. And gave it to his holy disciples, apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you for the remission of sin. disciples and apostles saying drink of this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin
especially with our most holy, most pure, most blessed, glorious Lady, that the Otokos and the Virgin Mary. Among the first, O Lord, remember Holy Father Francis Popo, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God, loving Bishop Milan. Preserve them for the Holy Church in peace, safety, honor, health for many years as they faithfully impart the word of your truth. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise the most honored and magnificent name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now and ever and forever. May the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. Now that we've commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, that our God who loves us all may receive them on his holy, heavenly, and mystical altar as an aroma, spiritual fragrance, and send down upon us in return his divine grace and a gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Lord, Asking for unity in the faith and for communion to the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. And make us worthy, O Master, that we may with confidence and without condemnation dare call you Father, God of heaven, and Son.
Odain is the kingdom and power and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. Bow your heads to the Lord. Through the grace, the mercy, loving kindness, only begotten Son, with me, are blessed together with your all holy, good, and life creating Spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us be attentive. Holy gifts to holy people. can approach. Behold, I approach you, Lord, I came in our God. And Father, give me the person who went before the Lord God, too, Jesus Christ. Let's go to the place from the two on page three, host of angels on high. Host of angels on high, give you glory supreme. O holy trinity, holy, holy,
Save your people, God, and bless your inheritance. We have seen the true Lord. We have received our Lord. We have seen the true faith, and we worship the Blessed is our God, always, now and ever, and forever. For you are our sanctification, we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In Blessing those who bless you and sanctifying those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Praise the fallen your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of your house, glorify them, return by your divine power, and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your church, to the priest, to our government, and to all your people, for all generous given and ever perfect gift this from above, coming down from the Father of light, and we give glory, thanksgiving, worship to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through His grace, loving kindness, always, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Glory to you, O Christ God, our hope. Glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now. May Christ, our true God, risen from the dead, have mercy on us and save us, we pray, with most pure Mother. Now the holy, glorious, lustrous Apostle, Holy Father, Basil the Great, Archbishop of Syria, Cappadocia. O the Holy Father, Nicholas, the patron of this church, and three prayers of all the saints, for Christ is good and loves us all. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Him forever. Thank you.